Hey guys, Sleepy Reader here. Um, it's kind of a yay comics little video. Uh, if you told me even 12 months ago that three of the comic books that I would really be looking forward to reading every month included Aquaman, The Flash, and Wonder Woman, I would have thought I would have thought you were nuts. Those I grew up a, a Marvel guy years ago, and uh, those three characters in particular represented, you know, the very blandness of DC Comics and the kind of uninteresting superheroes uh, that that kept me from ever really liking DC. Um, I always liked Batman, and I eventually, you know, loved the fringe kind of characters at DC and the Vertigo stuff, but their mainstream superheroes other than Batman, it was kind of, seemed kind of laughable to me. Uh, and maybe I was missing out on a lot that I didn't know about, but that, that was my impression of them. And, uh, and now I really enjoy them, so I guess I have to thank the new 52 for that. Um, even though it's probably screwed over a lot of other readers, it's been good for me. <clears throat> I'd say with Aquaman, I started with the art, which to me was um, very Neil Adams reminiscent, um, but not in a bad way. I mean, uh, some people imitate Neil Adams and it, it just looks very awkward or something, but uh, the artist Ivan Rice really pulls it off, and I think he's a really good storyteller. These, uh, these Aquamen are... I think they're kind of typical of what I've read on Wikipedia being what's called decompression in comics, where the where they go for kind of a widescreen cinematic approach, and they kind of slow down events, break them down into more panels, and have less words on a page, and stretch the story out over a lot of issues, and uh, sometimes that that's Gets, can be a really cool effect, and it seems to work really well in Aquaman. Um, and I think a lot of that is due to the writer and the way he's able to break down the story and, and spool it out in this nice <clears throat> cinematic way. And uh, another really good thing, and I don't know how much of this was in previous Aquamans, but I, I've come to appreciate in these issues the whole idea of Aquaman being torn between the world of the ocean and the culture that's somewhere down below. Uh, it's still a little vague to me, and maybe that's part of the problem of decompression. It doesn't give you all the information you need. But, um, but anyway, I find his character fairly compelling because he's torn between the world of the seas and the world of dry land, and he doesn't really fit either one of those. And I'm assuming I will learn more and more about that as we go on. Um, and I also um, find the sense of, of him having this backstory that we're still being revealed has so far been very compelling. Uh, on The Flash, I think everyone always talks about how great the art is and uh, and I agree with everyone about that. The artwork and the coloring uh, by the two collaborators, who are also the writers, uh, Francis Manipool and Brian Boccicello, is al always there's always something interesting going on. Uh, there's, they're always surprising you a little bit here or there. Um, the stories themselves are fairly meaty, solid, good old-fashioned superhero stories. Um, with lots of interesting villains and the um, the uh, revelations about Flash's powers and the speed force and this way he can think really fast are really cool. So uh, every month I, I look forward to see what, what the Flash is going to be up to. And then Wonder Woman, you know, totally to my shock because I used to think she not only looked ridiculous but was bland and... and that this whole idea of the the Amazon island, Paradise Island that she comes from seemed to always just fall flat and be lame. 
now I think it might be my favorite comic book. Um, the Brian Azzarello, the writer, and the artists have decided to go uh, full out for the mythological approach, but they're doing it in a bit more of a a vertical way, a reinterpretation of the gods and and the other mythology, the demi gods and their interactions with some human characters. Um, so every time a god shows up, like there, whoops, there is Mars, uh, the god of war. He's not what you would expect, but it's really cool. And once and once you uh, start reading it, it's you feel like, oh yeah, that's a really good way to do that god or to do uh, Vulcan Hesphestius. I am, I need to reread and see whether they're going for the Greek or the Roman names. But there we have Vulcan, the ugly god of, of volcanoes and of creating things. Um, and it just works really well. Hera is really good. Um, Cupid or Eros or whoever he is with his little golden guns is really good. So and and the whole thing has a nice um, ensemble cast uh, that we're getting to know, and I'm I'm hoping we keep getting to know all of them. Some of them gods, some of them demigods, some of them just humans. A human who's been impregnated by Zeus. And uh, and the plot keeps playing twists upon the mythology and and Wonder Woman's involvement in it. Wonder Woman is kind of a regal, truly good person kind of hero, um, but in a way that, that uh, rings true. And the artists are fantastic. Uh, the issues vary between um, uh, Bernard Chang and, or sorry, Cliff Chang and Tony Akins. And Cliff Chang has this kind of beautiful mythological style, um, kind of perfect for Wonder Woman as this classic, my computer is distracting me, as this classic um, goddess kind of character. And then Tony Akins also does a, a wonderful job, but his style is a bit more, uh, it's a bit more vertigo, and it's also a bit more old-fashioned comic book, if that's possible. He kind of evokes, at times, the feeling of, of really old Golden Age comics to me, although done in a much more graceful way, and, uh, and maybe uh, evokes a kind of horror feeling, too. They're both really great artists. So I really, uh, of all of them, I look forward to Wonder Woman most of all. Um, are there any, uh, the downsides of any of these? I'd say with Aquaman is, is the fear with the decompression that we may never really get the full story. Um, it takes so many pages just to spool out a little bit of what's going on. It, it's fascinating to read. Um, and my other almost silly complaint about it is that I don't like Aquaman's face. Everyone else's faces in the story are very expressive. And his face seems to come... I'm trying to now find examples of his face. His face just seems to come out of some other other comic book, almost. Almost as if the, uh, the artist is following some someone else's plan on what Aquaman should look like. So it, it just sort of... It's a very minor quibble there. <clears throat> and because the story's sort of spooling out so slowly, I, I am a little uneasy of whether they're, they're really going to fill us in on all these things that they've made us interesting in. And maybe the whole idea of dropped threads is, is the weakness of the Flash. I, don't, I think they will eventually bring it all together, but there's a lot of little threads. I'm, I'm wondering more about his super, the super speed of his thinking and how that's going to, is that going to play in some more or they've just dropped that idea. Uh, with Wonder Woman, the only flaw is the going back and forth between artists. Although I like both the artists, it's a little jarring to go between them because they give you a slightly different vision of Wonder Woman and, and her 
um, nice complete world. Um, so if they could, it would be great if they did six issues of Cliff Chang and then six issues of Tony Akins or something like that. Um, different story arcs to match the different artists would be great. Um, the other, <laughs> the other downside with Wonder Woman is I kind of live in fear that they're just gonna go off in another direction. They're gonna go back to some older version of Wonder Woman or or chuck this new version and try yet another one. It seems like, from what I know of Wonder Woman, they're always trying to reboot her and always trying to do something different with her. Um, and she's always not as popular of a character as they'd like her to be. So I'm hoping this mythological. Uh, large cast kind of approach where it's not just Wonder Woman's story but it's kind of a story of a whole a whole mythological niche of the DC universe um, I'm hoping that they continue with that um, so it's just <laughs> I guess this part of being an old comic book reader it's painful to think of something that's good going away yet again um, I'd say that what was I going to say? Something else about Wonder Woman. Uh, I'd say that she... Yeah, total, total loss of thread. But anyway, i got to continue. So the new 52 has been great for me. I think it, because it started fresh and it did get a lot of hype, it got me back into kind of a monthly and weekly comic book habit. Uh, it's kind of nice to have the same numbering on all these issues and it's uh, it made it easy to give new things a try. I would hear a little good about Wonder Woman and I was paying more attention to what people were saying and what sort of critical critical type of people were saying about what was good and bad and, and checking out a lot. I checked out a lot of, of the New 52 compared to what I normally would do with comic books. Um, so it's made it more exciting to go to the comic book store, and it, it, it sucked me back in, <laughs> in a bigger way. I mean, I was always there, but I was more on the fringe, and I was spending more time, you know, delving backwards in, into things with, uh, with uh, uh, trade paperbacks and collections and the like. Um, it brought me back, to, not back, it brought me to YouTube looking for what people were saying about the New 52 when it first started, and slowly helped me discover all the different people talking about about comics on on YouTube and um, you know the I'm sorry it's late at night I fell asleep putting my daughter to bed and and then woke up and decided to to do this video before my thoughts all slipped away on me but um, the one thing that Another sort of negative that I've noticed with all of them is what is the timing on all these things? They just don't, they all seem to be taking place at slightly different timelines in characters' lives. Um, so it seems like The Flash has maybe been The Flash for a few months, I'm guessing, before issue one started. Whereas Aquaman's been Aquaman for quite a while, but is now... Uh, becoming more of a public superhero, I guess. I'm not sure. And how long has Wonder Woman uh, been away from Paradise Island? Um, the human woman Zola, I think her name is, knew who she was in issue one, so she was already famous to regular mortals, regular humans in the regular human world. Um, but I don't think she's been in the human world too long. I'm just not clear on that. And I had, before the New 52 started, when I was hearing about it, I just assumed this would be the, uh, all the, the current artists and writers' chance to do their own year one, you know, start off with their really intense mission statement about superheroes, the way Frank Miller did with Batman Year One. And that was probably expecting too much, and it's kind of a quibble. I still enjoy all these books. But it is, there is something odd about the timing of it all. Um, and I think part of why they played with that is, is their choice to make some continuity continue from the past. Like I understand Green Lantern pretty much has all the continuity from the past. And, and, and also their, 
desire to have everything start at once, but they realize that different heroes may have started at different times, so they have to play everyone at, on slightly different timelines. But that that makes it a little weird, a little odd. Um, and now they have uh, zero issues coming up, I think, in, in month 12 of the whole reboot. Um, and those zero issues, I think, judging from what I've seen, a lot of them will be um, flashbacks to the, to the actual beginnings of things. But it seems like a strange time to do that. And it seems like why, why do just these one-issue origins, I think, a whole you know, year, issue by issue, year one of, of a hero becoming who they are could be really fascinating. Um, anyway, slightly lost, uh, uh, in my opinion, a lost opportunity, but, but uh, by no means ruining the New 52. Um, and the zero issues, I think, also are a way to kind of, for them to kind of boost sales again after a year when people's interests may be flagging, and I can't blame them for wanting to try to get sales going better. Um, and then I am very aware of the people who been, who were loyal DC readers and who were kind of screwed by this. Um, it's most noticeable in Superman, which now sucks and used, as far as I could tell, used to be quite good. Um, and, and there may have been a lot of good Flash stuff that got thrown away. I haven't heard anyone complain about, about Aquaman or... And, and maybe there was some good Wonder Woman stuff that, that I don't know about that I should go back and look for. Um, but all in all, uh, I think I, I may do a few other videos where I'm kind of considering the New 52 as a whole, focusing on some other comics that I like. Um, one thing I, I think of, because I think all of these, these three, because they're amongst, they're sort of the second tier of the big heroes in, in the DC universe, I think they're all in the Justice League, and I lost interest in the du Justice League very quickly, at, and looking at each of these is interesting because they have their own distinct worlds and, uh, and they're very rich. And I think when you bring together a group of characters who have their own rich worlds, it's harder to, to mesh them together. I don't know. I just couldn't. I had trouble getting interested in the Justice League. Um, and, uh, you know, that's where maybe groups like the X-Men, where they're, they're in that group, that's their main thing, that's their world, uh, make for inter more interesting groups than the Fantastic Four. Uh, anyway, I, I'll be back later, uh, well, with other reviews, other videos about other things, uh, but over time, I think I'll do a few more reflections on the New 52, uh, since it's played a big role in my reading of the past year. Talk to you guys later.